Hello everyone. Thanks for coming outside with me today. Uh, we're actually not much of outside, or rather inside, but today we're going to talk about uh, DIY lighted knocks. I have my Easton uh, Bloodline Arrow here, and I have a homemade lighted knock in here. But all it is is a push on and a pull off. And uh, I want to show you how to make these today. This is not a Phil Bobber light, um, as uh, some people on the internet have decided that they want to make. Uh, this is rather a much better, this is a green version, uh, a, a much better version of a homemade lighted uh, knock. And as you can see, it's very, very vibrant, very, very, very colorful. And I just want to share how I, uh, how I make these today. Very inexpensive to make. And uh, we'll go through the product list and we'll go through how we make these. But first you want to start with, I'm going to turn my desk on here. We're going to make a red one today. Because uh, I shoot Easton Bloodline Arrows. Uh, here's my package of knocks. I recommend uh, for this project that you get a bag of extra knocks. Um, I got mine off of eBay for very inexpensive. Uh, you, I would recommend you do the same. You can get them through Amazon or your local sporting wood, goods or uh, archery supply store. But I got a bag of 25, I think, for uh, for less than eight bucks. So um, you might end up uh, uh, gumming up a couple of these before you get it right. Um, so I recommend you buy a bag just in case. You don't want to accidentally ruin the only six knocks or dozen knocks that come with the arrows already. So we're going to take our knock here, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a drill. I have a cordless uh, Bosch drill here. And take a very, 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 very small drill bit. Um, I think it's about a millimeter and a half. Forgive me, I do not know what that is in terms of um, standard size. I only know the metric. But you'd figure, being in America, we would know the uh, standard size, but we don't. And so basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in at the point of the knock, and I apologize you can't see this very well, but I'm going to go in at the cuff of the knock, right of when the interior shaft meets the cuff. And I'm going to drill a small hole angling, if I point the knock this way, I'm going to have it angling in like this, just slightly, right at that collar, that cuff. It's a very thin wall, but again, if I can show you here, I'm going in right with the, uh, with the drill bit right at that cuff. Oh, there the camera focused. I'm going right in, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle it like this, so that way I drill a little bit of a slanted hole going into the collar, with uh, the collar being, or the shaft being right here, um, and I wanna drill into the collar a little bit, angling back up this way. So I'll angle the drill bit like so, and I'll drill it out just a touch, so it faces a little bit backwards. And if you can see, there's the hole, and we've angled it up towards the prongs of the knock. Okay? Very small drill, but I think it's a millimeter, millimeter and a half. Like all good sportsmen's workbenches, mine is an absolute catastrophe. Um, but I have a three, thrill, three millimeter, can't talk again, LED white uh, bulbs. And again, I got these uh, very cheap off of eBay. I think I spent five bucks for uh, 50 of these things. That's very good. I mean, that'll set you up for a lifetime. Mine do have the little hat on them. Some knocks, what we're about to, what the next step about to show you, some knocks will require, in order for the head to fit into the shaft of the knock, up towards the collar, that you knock off that little lip with the little, uh, the little hat. And all you need to do, which I will not do here, but all you need to do that is you're going to want to take a uh, box cutter knife or some other sharp utensil, put your thumb underneath the hat, like so. Don't use it with the flesh bit of your index finger, but rather with your thumb, and then you're going to want to chip that off, um, that little hat, so you just have a flush, completely flat, conical head to the LED. Um, but these knocks here, uh, they will allow me to put this LED all the way in, all the way up into uh, past the cuff. And I don't know if you can see that in there, not moving. Uh, but you can see as it goes all the way up in there, which for these, these are uh, boning uh, double lock uh, knocks, and they have a very wide gap in here, so I don't have to actually have to cut that off at all. I can just leave it. But some arrows, uh, for instance, I know here, this is a uh, gold tip knock, this green one here, and uh, I did have to um, cut that hat off in order to fit it up in there. It won't damage the LED, but you'll need to do it um, for certain knocks if you want to have it fit all the way. So, 
on an LED light bulb, uh, there are two there are two legs for me, a longer one and a shorter one. One is the positive, one is the negative. And to find that out, you'll need a battery. And in this case, this is a uh, uh, battery you would use um, to replace uh, a uh, lighted bobber. So that's where the fill bobber uh, uh, light came into really into fruition. They're also used in Luminoc batteries uh, for real, you know, factory made lighted knocks. Um, but in order to find which leg is which, all you have to do is take it and there's the little prong there on the end. I put one leg into the collar, which is this little lip in here, which is the long leg, and then I'll put the short leg up top and bada boom. She lights up. LEDs, I think they're somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, 14,000 um, uh, part lumens. Um, that's about where I'd recommend. You can do any color LED you want. If you have a green knock, uh, you're more than welcome to do a green LED or a blue knock, blue LED, red knock, red LED. White um, is just one of the things that it, it shines the brightest. Um, so uh, green is a close second. Red on the color spectrum, Roy G. Biv. Red has the uh, lowest, so it does not shine as bright as these white or green. So you've identified, you've made sure that the the, uh, the light works. That's very important before you shove it into the knock and your battery works. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to go back to your knock. Since we've checked all the electronic components work, you're going to go back to your knock and you're going to go back to that hole. And I'm going to actually going to take my box cutter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start scoring a line. I'll probably edit this part out, but I'll probably score. I'm going to score a line starting at that little hole that we made way back when, all the way to the end of the knock. And the idea is that I'm going to cut all the way through just one side of this wall. I don't want to come on the other side and cut. I do not want to do that. I just want to cut on just, just one whole side. So when you get to a point where you can kind of start um, almost getting to the end, you can take your knife point here. You have to be careful with this bit. Um, and you, want, you can work it into the end of the groove like so, and you can start working it back towards the cuff. I'm not at that point yet, uh, because I, if I try to do this, I'll push and end up slicing my thumb wide open. Okay, as you can see now, we have cut all the way through, and I'm going to make sure that I have a definite cut. I'm just gently working it up towards that hole. So now I have definitely have a definite cut all the way I kind of mucked this one up a bit, I apologize. But the idea is you want this to be a tight. You don't want to cut a groove. You just want to cut it so that if you the, the plastic goes back together um, and that hole is the only thing that is essentially a hole. I mean, terrible description, but um, you want this plastic to all come back together. You don't want to cut a groove in here. That'll weaken the walls of this knock. You can already hear the kind, they're starting to weaken already. And you want it to stay firm in the knock in the shaft part of this knock as much as possible. You want that hole to be the only escape for any leg of the LED. To have the LED as though the long leg is on top, and I'm gonna hold the knock so that way that hole is facing up, that hole in that groove, and I can put this uh, LED in. Remember, I didn't need to cut the hat off. You might have to. So that way it's firmly wedged in there. It's not gonna twist or anything. And I have that long leg of the LED there, as you can see. I have it facing up along with the hole, which is facing up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that long leg, I'm going to start kind of working it upwards, just the long leg. Start working upwards through that groove, just like that. Okay. And remember, it's not a, I went in and cut out plastic. I just cut a slit and I'm working it through. It's still a complete piece of plastic there for the knock. And all I'm doing is I'm going to work that leg up towards that hole. You got to be careful with it because you can pull the leg right off the LED, which is not good at all. You need that. They're very delicate. Okay, so I'm working it towards that hole. And when it goes in, it will snap. I don't know if you were to hear that, but you can, it'll snap into place. Because what that happens is it was pushing the plastic out and now the plastic closed around it and the hole. So now what I have is basically a little ballerina of a lighted knock. And uh, the short leg, again, is sticking out. Just to double check that I didn't ruin anything, I'm going to put that, uh, uh, that short leg up against that prong or nipple of the battery. Hold that with my uh, fingers here. And I have a piece of paper clip here. And uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the other leg and touch the battery. And, oh, and she lights up. I'm going to take the leg that I have sticking out here. And I'm going to wrap it around the shaft of the knock. And I'm going to wrap it underneath 
the cuff. So if you, you know, take your thumb here, you can rub it up and you can feel when the shaft meets the top, the harder piece, the thicker piece of plastic, there's that cuff there. I want to put it right into that cuff. I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers or you can use any kind of thing. You can do your fingers if you really feel so, but I like getting a good grip and really getting a good grip and getting it and pulling it around as tight as I possibly can um, to that uh, shaft of the knock. And then I have a little excess sticking off because that's a, that's the longer leg. So I'm just going to take a pair of wire cutters and I'm going to clip that little excess there to make it flush so I don't have any overlap. You don't want any overlap of the wire. You just want it to come around and basically get back to the uh, original hole and stop there. You don't want it to try to overlap. That It just uh, it doesn't look good first of all and it's just uh, it won't make for a great connection. So what I have now is I have basically a collar uh, you can see it there, that metal collar, and that was the long leg of the LED. Check your electrical components before you start um, sticking everything together. Uh, you always want to double check because you don't want to ha be uh, halfway into the project and find out the electrical components aren't working. Oh, and she lights up, so she's working just fine. We're ready to move on to the next step. These are 26 to 22 gauge buck connectors, and you can use the non-plastic coated ones. I just so happen to have the plastic coated ones on, on hand. And all they are is we're going to connect the battery uh, prong, the battery nipple, into the leg here of the uh, LED. And uh, that's going to establish our connection between those two parts of the circuit. It's just a metal casing inside the plastic tube here. Uh, you crimp it in and around. Yeah, you're supposed to be used for telephone wires and small circuitry and that sort of thing. And well, I guess this is small circuitry, so I guess it is applicable for us. Now, for these plastic ones, there's an ex there's a little bit of excess plastic on the end. Um, we don't want that. So I'm going to take my wire cutters. I'm actually going to cut off that little extra uh, bits of plastic here on both ends. I clipped off that excess plastic there on the end. So I just basically have the metal um, in the middle there co coated in plastic. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, knock here before I do the battery part, and I'm going to fold over the LED leg, um, I'd say probably a couple millimeters, folded it back in on itself so I just have a little bit more meat inside the connector when I crimp it closed. Okay? All right. So I'm going to take my connector, just drop my connector, take it off the floor. There we go. And I'm just going to slide it right into the hole there, doesn't matter which end. As you can see, it would fit together like so. Now, I do have a crimping tool. Uh, you can do this without a crimping tool. You could just use your uh, regular old needle nose pliers, or you, if you have the, the big chunky set of needle nose, you, those work just fine. You just have to be careful because they're not f uh, round crimpers. If you have crimpers, highly recommend you don't. Uh, if you don't own a pair of crimpers, that you get one. Uh, but uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to crimp this then, and there you have it. So that is crimped on there. That is not coming out anytime soon, although I wouldn't recommend pulling on it because, well, delicate LED legs don't like getting pulled on too much. Okay, so that's connected. Now we just have to do the same for the battery, although we're not going to bend back this nipple. Uh, don't do that. That's going to cause some serious issues. But all it's going to do is just go on the other end. You're going to push everything, make sure it's all as tight as possible. And before you crimp that battery in, because it's by far the most expensive part of this whole thing, just double check again. Take your paper clip and look, she lights up. So this is a fully finished product. You could take this out right now, put it in your arrow, and it basically would work. But there's still a couple steps here uh, that I want to do uh, before we take it out to the woods. What I'm about to use here is 3 16 uh, inch tubing. I have a piece of it here for you already. I forgot about that. And all I'm going to need is a piece that covers anywhere from the green to about the mid-level of the battery. And this string tubing, once it's shrunk down and added to your arrow, it doesn't add that much extra weight. So don't panic about it. You go, why? I don't want to throw off the FOC of my arrow. You're, you're not going to throw off the FOC of your arrow. Um, it, it's, it's all going to be perfectly fine. So I don't have a heat gun here in my shop. Uh, save a little bit of electricity and a little bit of money, but I do have a candle, and candles are uh, nature's heat guns, and uh, they work on shrink tubing just fine. So I'm going to take, coming back to either an X-Acto knife or in this case a pair of scissors, and I'm going to cut off that inch, inch and a quarter uh, piece of shrink tubing. Put those away. 
or have them fall down. You know one way or the other. Workbenches are only good if they're cluttered, right? That's how that works. I'm just going to slide it right over everything, up to flush there with the bottom of the dock. And then I'm just going to work it over the candle heat. Now, if you use a candle instead of a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer, but it takes a long time, uh, in my experience. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure that everything's set and together here. You don't want to accidentally put heat tubing over it because then you're going to have to cut it off and put everything back together. But we know it works. We've checked the electronics so we can just put the heat shrink tubing all the way up. And with a, with a candle, you don't want to get it super duper too close because it will melt plastic and uh, these ion batteries do not like heat. So uh, just be very, very cautious as you use a candle for as a heat gun. But it doesn't take that long. Just working it over, kind of revolving it. And there it has it. To me, it's just night and day in terms of the professionalism. Now, one thing I can feel right now that I'm, I'm definitely going to warn you is that these lithium batteries, um, if you overheat them, they have the possibility of exploding. This one actually I can feel is very hot right now in my hands. Um, I would not, if I wanted to try to shrink it again, I would not put it over the candle any uh, for, for a while, uh, although this one is done. So you got to be careful that soldering with these batteries, uh, heat shrinking with these batteries, you got to be very careful because overheating them will cause them to explode. Uh, for this last little bit of the project is a little bit of spring. Now, um, I have a paper clip here that I just kind of put all these little bits of spring onto. Uh, but all this is is just a spring from a ballpoint pen that I've cut into segments. And you don't need, well, you don't need any of it because I just lost all of it. So what I've done here is I've taken a little bit of that spring. You can probably barely see it. I cut a piece off it using the wire cutters. And I just took my fingers and my little needle nose pliers and just stretched it out a little bit. So the coils are a little bit wider. And it's more closely the diameter of the end of the battery, the lithium battery here. Okay, and all I'm going to do is, since the screw is naturally uh, in a cur or the screw, the screw, the spring is naturally in a screw groove. All I'm going to do is, I'm literally going to twist it onto the end of the battery, like I would uh, screw into a piece of wood. Okay, it's it's just on there, and you can work it up a little bit more with your fingers. And there it is all the way on. Now, the whole purpose of this screw is that inside, let me get my, let me go back to my bloodline arrow here. Inside the broad, or in the lighted knock, I don't know why I said broadhead, there is this little bit of screw here. And you notice that I have one coil of this spring, I keep saying screw, of this spring is off. And what that's doing is that it's giving me a 100% firm fit. You notice that this isn't sliding in or out. It's because this, that, uh, I almost said screw again, that spring is keeping it with a little bit of tension, a little bit of friction, is keeping it inside, again, the arrow shaft. Now, you don't need the spring. For instance, um, uh, I've made arrows for gold tip arrows and uh, carbon express arrows, and they don't need the spring uh, for some reason. I don't know what it is. Bind bloodline arrows, however, need that spring. They need that tension. But whatever you need to do, whatever your di diameter of, of the arrow, all you have to do is just pull off a coil. You have to be kind of careful because these coils are sharp once you cut them. And just lift it up onto the battery itself, just like that. And it's going to cause, and you can see, you can hear it as it goes in, it's stuck in there. This knock is not going to come out. Best way to test it, tap it on the table. There she lights up. If they come on by tapping it on the table, it's the right friction. If it comes on just by you kind of gently pushing on it, it's too loose. And if it doesn't come on unless you wrench the thing on, it's way too tight. Um, if it's too tight, you'll have to kind of shave off bits of plastic. But all I did there to turn it off was I just twisted it and pulled it away from the lip there of that leg is right there. I just pulled that leg away from the lip of the arrow. And all I need to do to have it come back on is just make contact. I can probably just pull that leg into the edge of the arrow. There it is. So again, I'm glad you can join me for me and my uh, lighted knocks here. We're glad you could be here. Glad you could learn something today. Remember to go outside, enjoy nature, and we'll see you next time.